We are back. Bash Mania 236. A long overdue one. Jesse Mendez. How are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful Saturday here. This was overdue and the timing worked out well. So I'm glad we can kind of talk about a little bit about the college season, Olympic trials, you competing next week. What's next? Um, I guess let's just dive right into it. Going back to the college season. It's funny because we're, we're pretty removed. Like in, I feel like wrestling time, it's like once something's two months past, it's so yesterday. But the NCAAs, there's so much that goes on that you talk about it for months and months and months until it's basically time to look at next season. (laughs) So I guess we'll do a little bit of both. Um, You know, you had an incredible season and you're a guy. It's funny. I I put out on Twitter. Does anybody have like, you know, questions for Jesse? And somebody responded like, my favorite non-PSU wrestler. And it's like, you are a guy that I think so many people root for because you are what makes college wrestling fun. You go out there, you absolutely dominate, you give it full effort. And this year, you went up from 133 to 141. And the Jesse Mendez we saw this year was just absolutely lights out. Your bonus rate basically doubled from the previous year. What went into that going up a weight, being as dominant as you were this year? Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of was just a thing. I I watched back my last season. I watched back my national tournament. And, you know, honestly, I was pretty upset about it. I didn't go into that tournament wanting to get sixth. I, uh, I just – I didn't like the way I wrestled. You go back and watch a match for me when I was, like, eight years old, and I'm usually all offense. So, one of those – I think I wrestled 60 minutes at the national tournament, three tiebreakers. It's just not how I win. And, um, you know, I wanted to set myself apart. I wanted to be a Hodge Trophy winner, but, you know, sometimes things don't work out the way you want it. But, you know, I just want to get that offense up, score points, tech fall people, pin people. I want to be a dominant wrestler. I want to be one of the best to ever do it in the sport. So, you know, that was just kind of a mental switch uh, this season, knowing that, you know, I'm a dog and I just got to show it. Is it more, is it, I'm, I'm not, not a technique guy. I'm not someone who's going to break down technique, but making that switch is a lot of it mental and sticking to your basics or how much of it is, you know, maybe working on your offense versus just working on executing it. Um, you know, a lot of it's a mental block. I mean, 90% of the time, your best opponent is yourself. You got to beat yourself before you go toe the line. And, um, you know, I definitely got better in a lot of positions. I mean, I go in every day with Jaggers and Steber and, you know, we fine tune a lot of things, but I mean, a lot of it's getting past mental blocks and just believing in yourself, knowing that you can compete with anybody. And, um, you know, I think that's what a lot of it was. It's just letting it fly. And, um, yeah. It's, it's crazy how much of it is mental. And I've been talking about it, you know, at my company, we've been doing a lot of work with wrestling mindset and learning more and more about how important that mindset training is, is crazy. And I'm curious too, from a from a mental aspect, especially. So you kind of had a fun rivalry with Bo Bartlett. I love that kid, and, and you guys wrestling is so fun. And all three matches were four one this year. He beat you the first time in state college, and then you went at Big Tens and NCAA's. What do you think the difference was in those matches? And does that kind of does that give you that chip on your shoulder like i know i can beat this guy when you lose first and then beat him a couple times yeah i mean it's one of those things where you know that first match i i wanted to get to his legs and you know i probably didn't click into the shot the way i wanted to on that last exchange and you know i thought about that match every day up until big times you know that one kind of ate at me and um you know i just i believe in myself i know i could beat him whether he's Penn State guy or not, I don't, I don't put anybody on a pedestal. And, um, you know, I just, I just felt like I was the better wrestler and I just had to show it. And whether that's, I got to shoot eight times. And, you know, honestly, I think my worst match was in the national finals, but, you know, just having that clutch gene to get it done is, is big. That, that finish at the NCAA finals was bananas. And, did you like go back and watch it at all? Like, what are you thinking in real time as you win a national championship that way? Which is so funny because it's like you're so dominant all year, and yeah. here the difference maker in a national championship finals is like a scramble. Yeah, yeah. No, that's definitely. I mean, 
I've envisioned that moment for for years, and that's probably the last on the list on how I thought it was going to go. Just <laughs> get double leg to a Grammy. So it's you know it's a funny way to win, but um, you know that's the the game plan we had. I just didn't execute how I wanted to, and you know sometimes you just got to squeak by, figure out a way to win, and having that clutch gene. So you know going back and watching it's it's crazy for sure. <laughs> it just I watched. I Somebody shared the clip. I, I went back and watched it a bunch, and it's like, man, it's it's so crazy. Um, but now you have a sixth place finish and a first place finish in your first two years, which I think many people, if they could go through life knowing they accomplished that, would be very very happy. What is the motivation now, and how do you kind of stay hungry for more uh, success in the college level? Yeah, I uh, I don't want to just be a one timer. I want to, I want to be, well, now a three timer, it was four timer, but you know, sometimes things don't work out the way you want it. So I want to go on, win two more, try to get two Hodge trophies. And you know, I just, I'm not very satisfied with where I'm at right now. I want to keep getting better. And you know, I have aspirations to be an Olympic champ, world medalist, world champ. And, um, you know, one national title doesn't get that done. So keep working with my head down. Yeah, and there's a lot of talk right now about Oklahoma State with all the coaching news. You know, David Taylor, Thomas Gilman, Jimmy Kenny going over there. A lot of focus on what they can do last year or what they can do next year. But as you know, I think John Kozak actually put out an article yesterday on Flow about like an early look up, an early look at the lineup for Ohio State. You guys return all your starters. You have such a young squad. What is the expectations as you look around as a team for the next next season? I know we're still kind of early. I know we're like five months away, but it's all it's never too early to get excited about it. What are kind of like your expectations and thoughts for next season as a team? Yeah, I mean this was a this was a weird season. We had I think it was four All Americans get hurt mid season, and we had a lot of young guys step up. And I just I'm super excited for this young team. We uh we got a lot of hammers and they're they're as tough as nails. So, um. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. They're uh, they've been working all summer. I mean, we've had 98 percent of our team in the in the room all summer. So, um, you know, these guys are tough. They're young. They're uh, they're hungry and they want to win national titles. So, uh, when you got a team like that, it's it's exciting. It gets me excited, and um, you know, want to help do whatever I can. I want to lead them, and um, you know, we want a team title. We don't want just individual titles. We want to we want to be that team that's holding the trophy up at the end of the year. Yeah, for sure. I, I think you guys can be right in the mix. I think um, with with the squad you have and the amount of returning guys you have, it's crazy. One guy competing next year, hopefully who didn't this year, Sammy Sasso. I know he was a big mentor of yours, a guy you've said has taken you under his wing. What was the whole experience like with everything he went through last year, getting shot, being knocked out of the season? Um, what was that experience like for you and kind of having that I, from the outside, it's like, man, it it seems like it could easily put things into perspective. Like, man, a lot of wrestlers are very, very grateful to compete and have the opportunity to compete. It's something I've heard on this podcast so many times. But I feel like it's got to hit different when somebody you're close with and look up to goes through something like that. Yeah, I mean, it definitely puts stuff into perspective. I mean, it makes it real easy to work hard in practice because, you know, I'm, I'm at practice while he's fighting for his life. So it's... You know, it was tough. He's uh he's about as tough as it gets and you know, just knowing he was there all season by our side, even after getting shot, you I mean he's so tough. And it's it's weird. You you kinda envision things on how you want it to go and then something like this happens and completely throws everything out the window. So um you know, it's it's a tough situation, but you know, we're hoping he comes back and gets himself a national title. For sure. And another accident. I mean, Tom Ryan, your coach, getting into a crazy car accident. There's no shortage of adversity in Columbus lately. Um, how is he doing and, and what's all that been like? Yeah. I mean, we have not had good luck these past <laughs> couple couple of months or year. But, um, yeah, he's doing good. He's getting better. Yeah, it's super tough circumstances, obviously. And uh, he was hurting for a little bit, but, I mean, he's back to himself. I mean, I think the hard part's going to be when he's almost 100% and then his ADHD kicks in and he's <laughs> got to keep him from trying to wrestle with our 25 pounders. So, but he's doing good. He's he's getting better. Uh, that's that's awesome to hear. And it's always so, these things happen like this. It's like you wake up and, you know, for us, like 
fans, you, you see it on Twitter, you see like rumors and news slowly creep out. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, this is real. And it's just a kind of kind of blindsides you. Um, I, I want to try to work in some some fan questions had some good ones before we kind of move on to freestyle. One of the, one of the folk style questions I liked was what are your thoughts on your mindset late in matches? You seem to have a killer instinct, like in the Bartlett match. What are your thoughts on that late in the match? Yeah, I just, I know that my style is hard to keep for seven minutes. So I know no matter how tired I am, I know they're just as tired, if not more tired. Yeah. And you know, late in those matches, my technique doesn't really get worse. I, I like to think I hold pretty good position. I finish really clean. So, you know, the later than these matches get, the easier it is for me to score. So I just, I keep that mindset of trying to go get one. I don't want to go to overtime. I want to finish it in that seven minute period. So, you know, just keep being offensive, offensive oriented and um, thinking of scores, what helps me win those matches and, you know, win those, those last minute clutch wins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, we, wrapping up folk style, heading to freestyle a little bit. You just came off Olympic trials performance. You lost 3-2 to the 2024 Olympian Zane Rutherford in the semis. And I think when when people say, like, man, he's right there. He's right there. He's right on the cusp. That seems to be the definition of it. You know, you're an NCAA champion. You had an incredibly dominant season. And here you are. You, you lose by one point to the Olympian. What is who, by the way, last year's world champion? I think he can very well, the way he just wrestled the last chance, I very well think that kid can go and medal. What was your takeaway from the Olympic trials and kind of feeling like you're right there on the cusp of, of being in his shoes? Yeah, I mean, that, that tournament was really good for me. I, uh, I got to show myself and everybody that I am right there, and I could have been that guy. Yeah, but um, you know, it stings right now, it sucks. I really wish I was that guy that was going and representing. United States, but um, it does feel good to to wrestle these guys that I've looked up to. I mean, some of those guys were my favorite wrestlers when I was coming up. So, um, you know, stepping in, on the mat with them and um, showing myself that I am that good and I, I can compete with those guys uh, feels good. But, you know, you take a loss, go back to the drawing board, and I'll be ready when it counts. What, from a standpoint of, you know, previous – senior trials how did that help prepare you for this olympic trials we've mentioned how you've seemed to just continue to make jumps you know you talk about eight years old being a dominant kid and you've continued to raise your dominance how has previous experience at the trials prepared you for this year's trials where you had such a great performance yeah um when i was going to those senior trials when i was in high school it was you know just trying to get guys feel these older guys feel that strength before i got into college and um, I think why I wrestled so good at those tournaments is just because I wrestled free. I I wasn't worried about the outcome. So when I wrestle in that mindset, I I um I wrestle on my best. And when I say that, I don't I don't mean I don't care about winning or losing. I I want to win every single match, but yeah, that's very you know, obvious. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I'm a, about as competitive as it gets. Like yeah. if I lose, I'm I'm gonna think about it every day. But um, yeah. But when I'm wrestling free and I'm not thinking about you know you might score on me here. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrestle at my best when I'm letting it fly. So I'm um, going into Olympic trials with that mindset, just knowing that whatever position I get into, I could, I could wrestle it just as good as any guy. So, um, you know, I just go into it with that mindset and I'm going to wrestle great. So that's kind of what I was thinking. You and Andrew Lirez were both two guys that there was a lot of talk about you guys wrestling at the trials and you guys were in opposite sides of the semis and we didn't get to see the match. We got close to seeing it on the backside, but I think he forfeited to Nashon Garrett. Um, yeah. But now, Beat the Streets always puts together great matches. You and the Liras are actually competing next week. What went into uh, taking that match, and how much are you looking forward to that? Oh, I'm excited. Um, you know, it's kind of a last-minute thing. This is about two weeks ago. But uh, I've been thinking about this match for a year and a half, ever since won the national title at 141. I kind of knew that was going to be my weight and, you know, we were going to meet at some point. So I'm, I'm excited for the match and, um, you know, it's going to be electric. We both got a fun style and, um, I think our styles kind of clash a little bit where, you know, he's going to be wanting offense. I'm going to be wanting offense. So, um, you know, it's going to be a fun match. We're both killers and, uh, you can expect me to come. I'm coming. Do you think that a match like this helps you? I mean, it's going to be fun. It's always 
so fun for fans when you have two two champs returning. You know, he he won in 2023, then redshirted this year, and you won this year. Now you're both going to be in the field next year. Does a match like this help give you a feel for him for, for next year in the college season or because it's freestyle folk style? Like, what is that like? No, this is this is huge. I mean, I get to feel him before I get to feel him in season. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. it's, I think it's really hard to beat me more than one time. So if I get to feel him now and then get to feel him before season, it's yeah. – it's huge. So, you know, getting to feel him now before season, get to feel what he feels like, feel that strength for the first time. Yeah. Feel his offense. It, uh, it's huge. What does it mean? You know, it's beat the streets always. It's, it's a great cause and they always put together great cards And you know, I've been following beat the streets basically for as long as I've been following wrestling. Cause when I started really following, following it was about when Jordan Burroughs became a client and friend of mine back in 2012. And I've been watching beat the streets evolve ever since. And now, I mean, you're basically headlining this thing. What's it mean to you? You know, you talk about competing with these guys at the Olympic trials that you grew up kind of idolizing and watching. And now I'm sure you grew up like most other wrestlers watching these Beat the Streets events. And now here you are headlining one. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Watching it happen in Times Square with Team USA versus Russia, Henry Cejudo. So it's, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think about. But I, I've kind of been envisioning this since I was little. I set out super high goals for myself. So um, to say I'm shocked that I'm here, I'm not really. Um, but, you know, it's – I mean, it's awesome. This is everything I wanted, and, um, you know, I'm just glad I'm here. Yeah, I love it. Do you have other – do you know – I don't know if you even know. Do you know what your plans are as, as far as um, freestyle plans for the rest of the summer afterwards? I'm not sure I'll be competing too much. I – uh I was going to go to U23s, but, you know, I've wrestled through. I, re- I really haven't had a break since I got on campus. I wrestled straight through a national tournament, straight into U20s, made the team, go to, go to Worlds, straight into preseason, straight into another season, straight into Olympic trials. So I, I've i been training to compete for two years straight. So this has kind of been my, my only downtime for a little bit. And I knew I was going to compete at some point. So when yeah. they threw this match, it was, I kind of knew off the rip I was going to wrestle. So it's it's one of those things. It's funny how spoiled us fans get. Like, we want you competing. I've already said how electric you are competing. It's like, we we don't want you to take a break. <laughs> so we yeah. want the exciting <laughs> matches. Like, will Jesse go to U23s? Will, I had somebody was um, texting me last night asking, ask him if he's going to cut down to 61 for the non-Olympic World Championships. I go, I wasn't even thinking about that. That's interesting to see if he could do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to get down to thirty-four, but um, yeah, it's I mean, been a I'm while since you've gotten down there. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm not down there for a reason. It's not a fun <laughs> cut to make, and uh, but I mean, I'd love to. I mean, maybe the cards lay out, and I do, but yeah, I mean, it's not a fun cut, but you know, I do it the right way. I'd be able to compete. So and, I mean. And- especially the timing of like if you went down to 61 and then you know sometimes it's a slower descent and a slower build back and you do have the season right after i think it's like what late september or something it's late in the fall so it's like then you got to go right back up and you know you have a potential all-star classic match maybe right after and other stuff so by the way chenzo and i used to always ask people folk style of freestyle i got to get back to that more what is your preference folk style of freestyle i'm a Big freestyle guy. I, I think freestyle steps above folk style. I love folk style. I love the like the hard nose style you gotta have, but freestyle is, it's superior in every way. Folk style has so many purists like Shane Sparks that it's just like yeah. And folk style is fun. There's not there's nothing like folk okay. style, but freestyle is just that level of just excitement, knowing there's no overtime, knowing there's gonna be winner after six minutes. The the I don't know, man. It's so there's people who take advantage of when you can do nothing on bottom or even on top in folk style. You don't really get, and there's a lot of exciting riding in, in folk style and a lot of exciting turns and stuff. But yeah, freestyle seems to be um, freestyle's where it's at. Um, yeah, that's that's wise. That <laughs> there's too many workarounds in folk style where you can <laughs> you can kind of play the rules and not really stay in the offense. So I think. I think freestyle, you gotta, it's just, it's head to head. You gotta go. Do you think that the folk style going to a three point takedown 
changed how you compete at all? Like there's more incentive to go and get more takedowns? Um, I mean, it definitely made it easier to not ride, which was weird because I rode more this year than I did last year. But um, I mean, I don't think it really changed all that much. It's easier to make a comeback and it changed a little bit of strategy where it's like you're up by three on top. You can give up a reversal instead of letting them escape and then getting taken down and you lose. So yeah. riding a little bit tougher when there's 30 seconds left because a reversal doesn't kill you. So it kind of changed a little bit of strategy, but <clears throat> I honestly don't think it changed that much. It definitely gave me more center to go get a takedown, though. Do you Are you a advocate for a push-out point in college? It just – it's so foreign for folk style for a push-out point. But, I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. I think yeah. it could be a good thing. It's just with all the scrambling and then going out of bounds – but I mean, I don't hate it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad if they added it. Is there any rule that if you can make one rule in college wrestling, do you have one that you'd implement? Man, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Let me let me think about All it right. for about ten minutes. I'll come back. To it. I'll bring it back. <laughs> okay. Um, here's a great fan question: Is Indiana wrestling underrated? I think so. I think <laughs> I think we produce, <laughs> which is. A tough topic in some areas, but I think we produce some of the best athletes. I mean, we got me, Andrew Howes, Michich, we got Paris, Nick Lee. So I think, I mean, even just my area, me, Michich, Sertis brothers, we got Andrew Howe. That's just in the region. So I think Indiana's a little, doesn't get as much love as it should, for sure. It's crazy, too, because you figure between you and Nick Lee, that's three out of the last four champions at 141 from Indiana. <laughs> yeah, just, Indiana kind of owns 141 right now. I'm not <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, we, we kind of already touched on this one, but whether you had kind of said mindset was, you know, one of the things that led to the big jump in between your freshman and sophomore season. Was there other areas of focus that helped you make that jump to national champion? Yeah. Um, I mean, just from my leg defense from freshman year, to sophomore is completely different. I went from being probably one of the easier guys to take down to close to impossible. So um, definitely my leg defense, I got better at finishing and then on top, top's a weird spot because I feel like don't people don't really drill top enough. So that was kind of a focal point for us where we were like, dude, you can't get better on top unless you work it. So we, I was in the room with Jaggers and Sieber basically every week getting better on top. And I think it definitely showed I got way more turns this year than I did my freshman year. So yeah. it, it definitely helped. How much of that in, in the college level, how much of that is you taking initiative – to wanting to work on something obviously as a team you know there, there's things that you're going to work on whether it's technique drilling all that how much of it though is you saying i think i need to improve here and going to jaggers going to steve or going to these guys and saying i want to work on this uh it's a it's a good mix i mean we do individual workouts i think we do a really good job at ohio state we do individual workouts at least twice a week and if anybody knows my wrestling better than I do, it's Jaggers. So he knows where I got to get better. And, you know, if I could feel something that he might not see, so I'll bring it up. And, you know, we got a good mix where he watches a lot of my tape, tells me you need to get better in congestion, you need to get better on bottom. And um, a lot of it's him, though. He he knows my wrestling better than I do. He knows where I'm weak. And, um, you know, that's just kind of what we work. I mean, I drilled against – real woods all season basically yeah. just replicating what he does on top because we know it's going to be there's going to be a tough spot the kid is an absolute dog on top like he's he's hard to beat in that position so i mean i had steber on top of me trying to replicate his style just so when i get in there it's not just like oh wow this is this is different right. than what i've been feeling so i it's a lot of stuff like that do you think it ever i i know i i I think it was with David Carr when he was on here. We talked about how, you know, when you have a lineup, you often have so many guys in so many different positions in their career, very early, late, um, banged up. How much of, of when you compete, you seem to be a guy that competes 
any opportunity, every opportunity. You just talked about taking the beat the streets match. You talked about competing for two years straight. You are not a guy who people seem to see on the bench. You seem to wrestle every opportunity you get. How much of that is a focus for you? And do you think that changes at all as you, you know, you go from being, I, I don't want to call you an underdog to win a championship when you play six the previous year, but you definitely go to having the target on your back now where you're the champion, you're the guy to beat. Does that change your philosophy at all? Where like, you know, you mentioned wrestling Alira is like getting a feel for him. Do you think that at some point the other guy can get an advantage of competing so much against you? And it's like, ah, maybe I'll sit this one out or maybe I won't. No, I, I only got four years in college. I'm not, I'm not sitting out of doing me. You don't, you don't get these moments back and I love competing. I don't, I don't care if I got to wrestle a guy seven times and he gets yeah. a good feel for me. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. If you're good at wrestling, you're good at wrestling. You'll figure out a way to win. So, uh, yeah. You know, you'll never see me fully healthy sitting on the bench. It's just, it's not what I do. It's, I think that's a weak mentality. If I got a target on my back, it, it don't matter. I'm, I'm hunting everybody else down. I love that. I'm going to clip that too next year. If like the funny thing is, is you can come on and you can say those exact words and then you can get the flu in January and miss a duel and someone be like, yeah. Jesse's ducking. Jesse's ducking Bartlett. If, if I'm healthy. If I'm healthy. <laughs> right. And like you can't control when you're sick and when you yeah. can't compete because you're getting sick. But I, I love that mentality. I, th I think more kids do, you know, they're it's it's tough as a fan because you don't know is somebody sick, are they into the weather? There's a, there's not a lot of communication where we kind of get the whole story. I think coaches are seemingly doing a better and better job of I know I've given um dresser a lot of kudos where he's like hey this guy's banged up for his foot this guy's sick so i i think this year we saw it with um missouri iowa state where they said listen our whole squad is sick like we're wrestling basically backups and that that stuff happens but i love the perspective to to compete and, and take advantage of your opportunity um one of the last things here i want to talk to you about nil how has that factored in so far into your career being able to have that as a resource for you yeah it's definitely a positive but um nil doesn't come unless you win so um you know i try not to focus too much on it the money will come then i will come but you got to be good at wrestling first so you know coming into college i completely solely focused on wrestling just because you can have all these nal things but you know the money's going to come when you're winning so just focus on being a national champ, trying to be an Olympian, keeping my head on the things that matter. Because, you know, I got my whole life to make money. But, I mean, it's definitely a focal point. I, I obviously want to make money from what I do. And uh, it's, it's a big positive for sure. I want to build my brand and, you know, have a fan base. But, you know, winning is probably a little bit more important to me. Yeah, it's crazy just how much, you know, just having it there as it was initially intended to like a business being able to go to you and say, Hey, we want you yeah. to endorse our auto dealership. Like we've gotten so far from that in this world of like, okay, you, you can't have pay for play, but NIL has largely turned into that. Like, Oh, yeah. you want NCAAs? Here's a bag. <laughs> like, yeah. It's crazy what it's turned into. Yeah. There's some, there's a lot of good things. There's a lot of bad things. Like I don't, I don't, don't really like the transfer portal that much. You see a lot of unloyalty and guys just trying to get a bag. So it's it shows a lot of guys' characters for sure. So safe to say after winning a national championship, you're not taking a bag to leave Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> if I leave Ohio State, there's something drastically changed in my mindset. <laughs> you won't seem to not have a block up. I love that, man. So, all right, Jesse, you compete. When is it? Tuesday, right? Yeah. So Jesse Mendez versus Andrew Lear is a 2023 NCAA champ versus a 2024 NCAA champ in a rivalry that we could see. I don't know if it'll be a rivalry with different conferences, but you guys could compete at, um, could be a couple times in the year, but yeah, super excited for that. Tune in. I believe it's on flow wrestling as it normally is. They got some other cool stuff going. Jordan Burroughs on a panel. Um, so sweet Jesse. Thanks for making time on the Saturday morning. A lot of fun wrestling today. U20s, yes, U23 World Team Trials. Anything you're keeping an eye on for that? Just watching the Buckeyes. Get a couple guys on a world team. Get better this summer. Hopefully get a couple guys. Get a world medal straight into the season. So you know, that's a good uh, it's a good stepping stone going into the season. See where you're at. 
And um, I'm excited for these young guys. I love it. All right, Jesse, if you think about what rule change you would implement, if you could, feel free to text it to me. All right, boom. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, everybody. Subscribe, like, comment. Let us know what you thought. See ya. Thanks for having me.